especially this year when we kind of thought like, all right, is this the cap? No, it's not. That man has been getting better and better. He seems to be doing great in the Netherlands and it's lovely to see. But he's going up against this man that he recently shared a boot camp with. And I can only imagine that they've played a decent amount of games against each other while being part of that Team Liquid boot camp. It is the Polish Zerk, Elaser. In the bottom right, moving from strength to strength here from Team Liquid, not in it, but from it right now, he is Skillis. Kind of funny, right? You know, a laser's on Team Liquid, but he's not at Team Liquid, but Skillis is at Team Liquid, but he's not on Team Liquid. Hopefully one day he'll be on Hopefully Team Liquid, day. from Team Liquid. You know, that'd be lovely. I'd love to see it. I think that he would be a phenomenal add to that team, especially because they did lose a Protoss, right? Harstem mm -hmm. going to the Shopify Rebellion. Feel like it is a perfect fit, but we can only have our fingers crossed. You know, Roddy, though, as we get into the series, I, I do have to thank you, by the way. I, I know Skillis went and lived at your apartment for a while, so you provided him the Roddy buff. And it was uh -huh. right around that time that we started to see him just go up and up and up and up and up. So thank you for those of us that want to see more parody in the setup. And in, again, just excited about seeing Skillis play well. Thank you for the Roddy buff. Uh, he did not live. He basically visited one day yeah. and uh, instead of letting him travel home late at night, I thought it would be silly. I was like, why don't you just stay over? And then he stayed over for a day and we just played a couple games, streamed a little bit, and then he went home the next day. But it's all Team Liquid. But he did visit the little city that I live in. And yeah, most of the time, whenever pros stop by, you know, Gabe stopped by once. He goes off and wins every single weekly. Rainer stopped by and... I mean, obviously, that boy has been doing very well. So maybe there is something to it. I just don't understand why it's not happening to me, Be a move. Uh, I don't know. It's because that you provide it. You know, it's one of those things where you can you can be the mentor. You can be the person that, you know, that, that partakes in the training montage. But I don't know. Uh, what I will say is if that was 24 hours of Roddy Boost, mm. I can only imagine how terrifying he would be if he actually, like, spent a full week with you. <laughs> uh, I don't wait. know if the world is ready for that, but... <laughs> you know, just throwing that out there. He might win Katowice. That might just be... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that might be the one thing that is missing now. It's uh, it's all been his hard work, and it's just great to see Skillis doing well because he is somebody that just genuinely enjoys StarCraft. You can see it. He loves it. He loves watching it. He loves playing in it. He loves participating. Even if it stresses him out, it's kind of good stress, right, that we all love, where it's like, okay, I am nervous, but I'm just nervous because I care. And I think that really does show. Uh, nobody really gets better in this game without playing it a lot. And if you want to play it a lot, you kind of need to enjoy it. And it's very nice with Skillis that he does. So we can talk about the openings here. And that seems to be a Twilight Council into a very quick Dark Shrine. As Skillis still had uh, three probes, at least on one of the gases in his main, only two on the other. But he is still going to open things up with a very quick Dark Shrine. One thing that's a bit of a meme, and I don't know if it necessarily is always true, is that Elazer is not particularly known to Overlord scout a whole lot. He does have an Overlord that's kind of casually chilling in front of the natural. That Overlord should be safe, right? Yeah, there's nothing that Skillers can really do about it. And Elazer immediately tries to send it home. Hmm, will he be ready for those initial DTs? I mean, he likes the blind sports, so I'm very inclined to say yes. But well, let's keep a close eye on it. Uh, Roddy, am I crazy? Or are we... I feel like the Robo should be going down by now. So this is going to be DTs warped in either... Def I mean, not defensively. Laser isn't going for a timing. But these are just going to be DTs warped in at home, sent across the map, I guess, looking for something. I don't see any probe on the map either. Or... Uh, this is an interesting approach to this. Yeah, no, this is definitely very different. It's not your regular DT drop. You are spot on. You're definitely not crazy. Maybe some things you're crazy. Maybe <laughs> Skillist has done his homework and he's like, you know what? Elaser loves to just attack with roaches, queens, ravages before he even has an overseer in the mix. And maybe this would have been a perfect blind counter. We know that that's not happening as Alara's on the way. The adapts were a little bit out of position. Ooh, this could be bad. Like, of course, we can warp in DTs, but one DT is going to have a very hard time cleaning up this many links. This is kind of bad, man. Like, I think the Nexus will be fine, but not before we lose the adapts. We lose a couple of probes. Ooh, that Stalker does not have a shield battery to protect it. I think it's a pretty sweet start. As long as Elaze doesn't lose too many drones, this work crawler in the natural is not quite done yet, though. So Elaze should end up losing a couple of drones here gonna lose two as the drones get pulled we're gonna have to see just how well hey it looks like it's only gonna be well okay, okay he's gonna get three on the flip side though not quite as disastrous for skillless as it looked at first with that link flood <laughs> he got two workers 
He canceled the shield battery, which can be a problem. Oh, hey, you know what? Free fourth drone. There we go. <laughs> Killis is pretty happy about that one. Not quite sure why that drone was there, but you know, he did get the shield battery. But in general, it felt like there was a lot more damage potential from a laser in that Link Flood, and it really didn't get quite as much as, as we thought. Yeah, I kind of wonder if there was a possibility for him to just right click on that Nexus, but maybe he was worried if another DT would show up and then he'd be losing two links at a time and he'd be getting close to killing the Nexus, but he wouldn't go all the way and he would throw away all of his links. Look at this. I thought this uh, build completely fell out of fashion. I thought the German taxi is no more, but a laser is morphing a couple of overlords into dropper lords. Overlord speed is finishing up, so a laser is going to be very aggressive. He does have a lair, so he can obviously bring overseers. If you look at what Skillers has right now, the answer is Skillers doesn't have a whole lot, but he does have a buttload of gateways finishing up. Four warp gates already now. He's got four extra gates finishing up. At this point, he just needs all the static defenses. The more cannons and batteries, batteries the merrier. But at this point, it doesn't seem like he's quite aware of it yet, right? Look at where the Archons are going. The Archons are not where they are supposed to be. And Skillers could be in trouble just because he's terribly out of position for this. Well, the Archons are going to get right on top of these Queens to start, which is always nice. And of course, the Queens for a moment cannot transfuse, but there we are. Roach is finding a way on in. Uh, but it is only two Archons here. Zella is joining the fray as well. They're trying to make something happen, but the transfuses are damn nice right now. But right now, only two Queens actually there. They're running out of energy. It was scary with the Archon position. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's a low Overlord. Archon is trying to chase oh. it down. One more shot. Oh, he ferries it forward, but he's not going to... Come on, drop it. Drop the Overlords. But he's not. He just says, I'd rather kill those roaches because the queens don't matter in the in the defense wow that's crazy he could have killed five queens but maybe it indeed doesn't matter because now there are so many zealots on top of all the drones he lays their head way too many resources in the bank he is still counter-attacking with links so he might find a couple of probes but nowhere near as many as the drones that he is losing this is just going to be it gg skillers even though the archons were out of position at first drops the overcharge, is able to get quite some value of it. And with those 12, no, 10 gateways that he had in the end, he is able to hold convincingly. But it is, it's a bit sloppy from me, Laser, that at the most crucial moment, when the battery goes down, the fight is happening, he lays his resources went as high as 1,200. Imagine Ooh. the amount of roaches and links that he could have had on the other side of the map. His army could have been way bigger and way more powerful. Well, uh, was he supply? I didn't look. Was he supply blocked in that fight? I saw he was pretty. He was getting pretty close there as he retreated. Um, was that what? Was that what happened? I did, again, I didn't see. I would have to take another look at it, okay. but we can go ahead and take a look at it. I guess I can open the stream. I don't think he was. I think maybe just no larva, but whatever it was, then his attack was just not perfect, right? Because 1,200 resources in a relatively short game, that is a lot of resources to be floating, especially when you're that committed to an attack. You, I don't want to say you want to kill your opponent, but you definitely want to kill at least the third Nexus. Yeah, man, I gotta, we gotta point out though, the presence of mind from Skillis to realize I don't really care about killing these six Queens. I'm just gonna run right on by. Yeah, the Overlord only needs one more Archon shot, but any extra time at that point, it, it doesn't matter because I'm just gonna go kill your base. I'm gonna go kill your production. I'm gonna camp where your larva is building and then you're never gonna be able to recover. That was an intensely intelligent move from Skillis, and uh, it certainly confused me in the moment, but it worked out at the end. I'm taking a look at the stream. He definitely wasn't supply blocked. 101 yeah. out of 130, up to 1,200 minerals. Yeah, it's just a little bit too much. It honestly is a bit too much. Elias could have had way more units there. Maybe he was confused as well about the build that Skillers was going for, right? Just a very quick three Nexus with a Dark Shrine, but not the traditional, oh, let's make a quick robotics facility. Let's go for an Archon drop. No. The man just warped in a couple of DPs at home. Cross used it defensively, sent one to the other side of the map, swiped up a couple of drones, found another bonus drone on his side of the map. Kind of a strange game to kick off the last best of five of the European part of our show. But don't worry, we have two more best of fives later tonight, lower bracket NA. It's going to be a lot of fun. Trigger versus Vindicta is a series that I'm really looking forward to. And then I think Future against Pili Pili, if I recall that correctly, and that could be very fun as well. We'll talk more about that later. In the bottom right side of Curious Minds, we are looking at the main base of the man who joined Team Liquid a little over a month ago. This is Elazer. And with a bit of an odd build in game number one, holding a laser German taxi with style with a plum with finesse. He is Skillis.
So you said you thought the German taxi was dead. I, I, we, I, we saw it a little bit after the patch. It we actually was pretty popular, at least in the games I saw, for like two weeks after the patch, and then we did start to go away. But I think we that that game also kind of proved why it, it's not as valid anymore. That being said, a laser did bank a lot of money. I don't know whether that was a, a larva problem or what. So that does remove some of the strength of it, but even still, as these Protoss players, they move onto this much heavier ground-based setup, whether it's Blink Stalker, whether it is Charizard Archon, which is really not common as a Protoss opener right now, uh, it does make it a lot harder for these German taxis to work out all the well. And I think we saw that in that last game. Yeah, it was obviously unfortunate for Elaser that Skillers had a build where he had access to that many gateways, right? Like, if Skillers would have played very different, let's say he goes into a robotics facility, makes an Immortal, makes a Robo Bay, makes a second Robo, and then a, a Forge, prioritizing crazy upgrades, and he only has a couple of units to work with, maybe then it does still look powerful. But no matter how we spin it, like, Elaser can't make an attack like that of such a low drone count while having that many resources in the bank. That's just a little bit unacceptable at the highest level. Elaser will know that too. Maybe he just got baited into it, thinking this was the right idea by everything that Skillers was doing up to that point, which definitely is not the gold standard, right? Warping in DTs at home, running them to the other side of the map, no war prism. So, I don't know. Elaser must have seen something that made him go for it, and perhaps that's why the build wasn't very polished. Yeah, or maybe it's just the assumption that Skillis would have gone for some level of Stargate play, which that triple Oracle style has been pretty much something that every single Protoss player is doing. But for the second game in a row, that's not what we see. Not on this map, not in Burligrad either. This one, though, is one that you and I are much more familiar with. It's just going to be a Glaives opening. The question now, though, is, is this four gate Glaives, which is, again, has been the standard, or is this one of those interesting three gate glaives, quicker third scenarios that we have started to see some Protoss players, Zhaun in particular, uh, start to play around? Okay, well, there we go. Three additional gateways. Yeah, but there's still That's many different is. ways to play it from here on out, right? You can have True. four gate glaive, and then you can go up to three bases. You can also stay on two bases, followed up with the speed prism and the disrupted drop. But sometimes they start building immortals at home, and they actually add two or three extra gateways, and they followed up with sentry immortal and a buttload of adapts. So there are so many different ways to play this as a Protoss, and it's up to Elazer to figure this one out, as he is firing up his first set of Zerklings. And obviously he wants to make sure he doesn't take too much damage from these adapts. It has to be an annoying way to start his best of five though, because I think that first game, Elaze is going to look at it and be like, well, whatever it was, it wasn't good. And if I want to win this best of five, I'm going to have to play better. This is actually a bit of an awkward time here for him, Laser. He got those lings a lot earlier than you normally would. So he's going to say, yes, I'm going to cancel the third base. Third base is not cancelable. It's not there. Skillis now. Uh, is there a Roach Warren? No, there is not a laser. He flooded Lings to try to cancel a third base that did not exist. So now Skill is absolutely hitting the gas here. Resonating Glaives done in 10 seconds, but the Adept find their way into the mineral line immediately. Two workers are going to go down. And, and Roddy, I don't need to point this out. Lings, unless they have the God Surround, are so bad against Glaive Adepts. Yep, and especially if they can avoid the Queens, and that's exactly what they are doing. I mean, Elaser was underneath the Prism at least, but this is a painful fight as he's losing a lot of links. He hasn't lost too many drones yet though, so so far it's all very acceptable, and the Adept numbers are dwindling. I mean, Elaser may not have had necessarily the right tools, but I think he's doing a good job, gets a lot of shots off on that Prism, may end up losing a few more drones here as he's now going to bring back the Zerklings that he was still hiding on the other side of the map. I mean, it's painful, but it's not that bad. Especially not if he laser gets the kill here on all five attempts. And it seems like he will be able to. Honestly, this could have been a whole lot worse for Elaser. I feel like this should be a whole lot worse for Elaser. That was a fantastic surround at the end. And we do need to point out, 10 workers have died. But Elaser, he's still, he has all these lings on the field. Still, Skillist does not really have a third. He's setting himself up to maybe get it eventually, but it's not there yet. So that really is the only kind of weak point that Skillist has in this setup right now. And Lings are going to look for that fight, but there are five adepts here. and They're going to kill one or two, but that's still going to be a ton of dead Lings. What do we, is that Warp Prism? No, it's just a observer. Where is the Warp Prism? Oh, oh, the Warp Prism died on the other side. Lost it to the Queens or maybe a Spore Crawler. So... I mean, Skillis, I have the feeling, was at this point faking the third, right? Because he's got the two mm -hmm. extra gateways. He is going to build another prism, and he is going to follow it up with a couple of immortals. I don't think this is an adept shade that he can let finish up. Losing these adepts again would be absolutely catastrophic, because then his follow-up push would just be so weak. It's a weird game where Elaze is sure he may have lost a bunch of drones, and he had no Roach Warn, 
if Skillers would have played this out a bit better, if he would have been able to get a bigger number of adapts where he could just fight the Queens. This game could have been over already, especially with Elaze sending that many links to the other side of the map and keeping there for the longest time. Now, it looks honestly very promising for the police, sir. It does, but this is this immortal adept army is still abjectly terrifying for a laser to deal with. He doesn't have any roaches on the field. They're coming up now, but they're not in critical mass just yet. And immortals are still pretty good against them. Is now Skillis running forward, trying to knock down the creep just to make this push a little bit easier. The one thing we got to point out: there are so many queens on the field right now with so many transfuses, but they are starting to die already. A couple of them have already fallen. Now Ling's looking for the surround, but they've got to back up because these adepts are just so powerful. Now Skillis he cancels the shade. This is the fight that he's looking for. The Queen Surround, the Queen Concave is doing a pretty great job, but it is starting to die. All the energy is gone. Immortals still firing strong, as now we see the Spore getting moved forward, trying to make sure that no war fence happen. But the army of skill is now, it's starting to fall apart just a little bit. Looks like the Queen Energy Buffer is just enough to provide enough time wow. for the Lings, the Roaches of a laser to pop out. And now is the Immortals Fall Roddy. It's, well, actually, no, that Immortal didn't fall, but even still, it's starting to feel like a laser has the hold here. Yep, Skillis does have three Nexus on the other side of the map. As long as we don't lose the Prism and the Immortals, there is definitely still some hope. But these Queens have done a great job in actually buying as, as much time as possible. But with that Prism being as low on HP as it is, that means both Immortals are going to fall. And Skillis is actually just going to tap out. GG gets called. And I was with you because the Protoss army did look pretty terrifying. Skillers' is Nexus, by the way, on the other side of the map was terribly out of position. Like, not one pixel, but like probably two pixels. It was like, Ooh. it was horizontal with the gas. So maybe that's why <laughs> Skillers was like, oh, I'm not even going to try to macro away my, my way out of this one. Uh, but yeah, those queens, I wonder how much damage those sucked up because they were there buying a lot of time for those roaches. And Elaze was like, do I go with the links? Yes, no, yes, no. Obviously, he didn't want to lose all the links before the roaches would show up, because then the immortals would have way too good of a time. Elaze handled that very well. That was impressive. Yeah, what were, I think, where, where were we at? Like, nine queens? Uh, Laser did a fantastic job of understanding that, okay, my roach warn is super late. I just, I just need to build more queens. And in general, that's the Zerg response, right? You, you in trouble in the early game, you build more queens, and it kind of works out for you there. But you're, that was... That was so much HP to soak. Roddy, now though, we're out of the short maps. We've had Skillis take one off of a laser pressure. We've had a laser take one off of Skillis pressure. But now we move into the most standard map in the pool. It is 2000 atmospheres. Does this mean we get more standard builds or it is it means that we get something really out of the box? I don't know, but I do know that these guys had a ridiculous game on this map mm. in particular. If I recall correctly, at the Intox Three Masters Katowice, they played each other in that open bracket round of 36. It was 1-1 at that point, and it was a game that Elaser basically had in the back. Like 98% sure guaranteed victory. I heard from a couple of other pro gamers, they stopped watching because the game was so over. They came back. And Skillers somehow still won as he laser took a couple of terrible fights with Ultras against Skytos. But that was a very different meta. But I do hope we get a similar Clown Fiesta, because that means that we're in for one hell of a roller coaster. In the bottom left side, we're looking at the main base of the man who honestly could have done a whole lot more with the Adepts in the previous game. And he may be kicking himself for that a little bit. It is the blue Protoss player, Skillers. In the upper right with fantastic transfuses in that game. Number two for Team Liquid, a laser. Maybe in that final fight, Skillers could have been a bit more decisive as well. Like instead of fighting the queens that were in a concave and just staying at range, maybe clicking forward a little bit and then just gunning down the queens one by one rather than uh, trying to just A move and see, you know, if the links are going to have a hard time engaging or not. Because now you're just doing a lot of spread damage. But that's obviously where Transfuse is absolutely amazing, right? Because all the queens are taking some damage, but all the queens are being healed up. And that's kind of the dream scenario for the Zerg. Well, if you just right click on a queen, and I know adapts don't have crazy range. If you get a bit closer, a lot of adepts can still shoot at one queen at a time. Maybe he would have been able to pick off a couple of queens a lot more effectively than just a moving from afar. And it did look like he did that for a little bit. He gunned down two queens rather quickly, but then, yeah, he just accepted that concave. But, Roddy, there's one thing I want to point out about this series. It's one, We've one. broken the curse. Mm -hmm. I was like, why it did he not, not mention it yet? <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> we got too excited about the game, I guess.
Yeah, no, it's, it's a funny, uh, it's a funny best of five so far. Because I mean, Twitch had expected it to be close. We all thought it was going to be close. And two games in, like, who would we give the advantage to, right? Like, Elaza could have done a whole lot more with his build in the first game. And if he would have spent his money better, maybe he would have been able to win. But then again. Skillers could have done a whole lot more with his building game too. And if he gets slightly high in number of adapts and he gets them together, he could have very well won. Uh, so I think there was a bit of mis-execution on the side of Skillers early on where he, he tried to split up the adapts, but against what Elazer had, no queens, no bailings, actually just getting up to like 10 plus adapts and keeping them together would make it impossible for Elazer to mine off any base that those 10 adapts would decide to shade to. That's the story I had in my head. That's how I expected that game to go. But as you said, I mean, Elazer did a great job of picking off an adept here, an adept there. In fact, he handled it rather adeptly. There we go. Elazer did great, but I, I still feel that was a little more up to oh, yeah. skillers, miscontrolling it, or maybe just misjudging the situation. But obviously, it is very hard. We see everything. Maybe he was nervous that if he would send 10 adapts into the main base all at once that they would run into a trap and there would be a couple of units ready to surround it because elaser traditionally has actually loved the dark response against resonating glaive adapts where he makes a lot of links but he also has three ravages ready and then you let an adept shade finish up because you think oh there is nothing here and the moment the adept shade finishes up you get surrounded by links corrosive bow lands in the center and you lose all your adapts almost immediately so maybe that's what skillers was worried about I'll buy that one, and certainly Laser was playing in such a way where he's maybe... The lack of units almost did feel like a bait, but Roddy, it feels like we're going to get something closer to what you were asking for, at least the opportunity for that sort of kind of late game Cloud Fiesta, Slobberknocker, whatever. It's a Voidray opening, Adepts, or excuse me, Oracles on the way as well. The only question I ask myself now is, is how many does Skillis get? Is, is this Oracle or is this Void Ray into, say, three Oracle, which is not something we see all that often? Or does he stay for the two? How does he look to bounce us into the mid game? Because this is certainly not Stargate commitment. Now, Skillis is making a lot of gateways. Wow, he's going to follow it up with Resonating Glaive once more. Uh, uh, this is, of course, very different than the previous game, and it requires a very different response from Elizer. And. Um, Wow, Elaze is not particularly known for that. Overlord scouting, and after he sees one oracle, he may just assume there will be multiple oracles. Imagine if he just builds spore crawlers and drones, suddenly gets hit by adapts, could be devastating. It's all really about what Elaze sees on the other side of the map. It does feel like this glaive timing has become more powerful with the uh, with the with the patch change because it used to be, well, okay. You know, I, I see my opponent go Stargate, and back before the two, couple of Void Ray buffs, the response would be, okay, I'm just going to drone, and I'm going to drone, and I'm going to sustain through the damage until I can hit this critical mass and be able to kill. But then we saw the advent of the Queen Walk, and suddenly Stargate openers were, I'm going to walk across the map with 45 drones and a bunch of roaches and uh, and some queens and try to kill you, which is really not good for this Glaive Adept idea. But now that that is not nearly as viable, suddenly we do maybe see Zergs getting a little bit more greedy. But for now, a laser, he will find these Adepts on the side. They're going to go down and he's going to find the drone as well, which is going to be a little bit suspicious for the man. Yeah, the probe. Uh, that's like, why the hell is there a probe? Now, you can read those two ways. Maybe my opponent made a very silly misclick, but I don't think Elaze was expecting Skillers to make too many silly misclicks. So it definitely did seem that uh, Skillers wanted to be cheeky and get a pile and a gateway up on the other side of the map. It's still a lot of adapts, though, and this time around, just a couple of queens not going to be good enough. Elaze's army at this point, 10 queens, 67 drones, zero units. He's making seven roaches at a time, but it's going to take a little while, and so many adapts are going to flood to the other side of the map. There is a chance that Elaser, despite the fact that he saw that probe, was not able to uh, get ready for this. I mean, slowly but steady, he will get the roaches out. But how many drones is he going to lose? These shades have really not been the best. This is, okay, it looks like three deaths into the natural or in the third base. They're going to find a little bit something. Uh, we've had two straight shades with the main army that doesn't find anything, but it, <laughs> it doesn't matter because now, now the damage is starting to come in force. 20 workers go down. Oracle killing a... Killing gas because that is absolutely worthwhile, but in general, I guess there was nothing else oh. to really attack it. But uh, yeah, at this point, it's starting to snowball. It becomes so hard for the Zerg to make sure their drones are where they need to be to stay defensively. So 22 workers have died. Yes, some of these depths are falling at this point, but behind this Skillis, he is on three bases. He's getting his blink on the way. He's going to have plus one eventually. And a laser's economy is in the dirt. We have to point out. Skillis has killed enough of Elaze's army that we're not as afraid of the, oh, you killed all my economy, but none of my army. Let me go and kill you now. 
couple of times the queens were a bit out of position there. I think if, mm -hmm. if Elaser would have left the queens in the mineral line in the natural, then that third or fourth shade, whatever it was, I think would have been a bit easier to clean up. And now here towards the end, the queens chasing that oracle out of positioning once more, exposing the drones. Skillless finds everything that he looked for and a whole lot more. 35 drones is insane. A couple of slow roaches are not going to be uh, intimidating at all, especially not with Blink more than halfway done. Elaser in a world of trouble, but honestly, in a weird way, it's impressive that he's not down and out yet because he had 67 drones and 10 queens when like 20 adepts were heading towards his mineral lines and an oracle. So it could have been worse, but it's still really, really, really bad, especially without roach speed. These roaches are going to have an absolute nightmare dealing with these stalkers. Roddy, I, I'm not convinced that him not being down or the laser not being down and out is not a function of a laser not being down and out, but just more of a function of the growth of Skillis. He doesn't have a robo. He doesn't have a good way to reinforce just yet. His plus one is not done. He has blink. So behind that, yeah, he did so much damage, but it will still be probably be a minute before he's able to really leverage that here as a couple of depths in the natural, but Stalker's on the third base, really just trying to knock down the Queens that were such a thorn in his side in that last game. But for now, good transfuse. The Stalkers will have to back up, and we don't really have that supply lead just yet, because again, the gateways are not done. Four more on the way, plus one not yet done. So Skillis is still a bit of a waiting game before he's really going to be able to put the pedals on the metal and take advantage of that lead he has built for himself. Elaser yeah, going into Mutilus here after the Spire finished up and he's going to build 12 at a time. I honestly don't think that Elaser necessarily even expects that these Mutilus are going to be godlike when Blink is already done and plus one is done. But I think what Elaser is just hoping for is that he can push Skillis back to his side of the map. That Skillis is going to be busy dealing with Mutilus for a little while and that he can at least stabilize, maybe get a few more drones out. At first, we're going to use the Mutas in a head of fight, and that's normally not the way we want to use the Mutas, but if they're still backed up by a couple of links and ravages, it could be decent. I want to point out, we still don't have Roach speed. Of course, Elaser has been very broke, but Roach is this far off creep without speed. That's so crazy. You almost never see that. I mean, Elaser, since he's only making units at this point, is just all in, and an all in is not going to work, and he needs to know that. Oh, that is spooky as anything. The Roaches want to be able to run, but... They're more waddling right now, and you talk about maybe using the Mutas in a straight-up fight, it's okay because there are Roaches and Ravagers. Skillis did a fantastic job of targeting down one Muta every time he backed up, every time he blinked, but here come the Roaches and the Lings and the Natural trying to make something happen. They do have a 30 supply lead and tons of this army supply of Skillis. All right, they're at the Watchtower. They're at the fourth base. They're not really there, so really it is all on these stalkers trying to make sure that something happens, but a great surround coming in from Skillis, looking to knock down the Roaches and the Ravagers, charged on in 10 seconds. Lings and Mutas are trying to kill the Stalkers before the Zealots arrive, but it is not enough. Skillis gets enough damage early, he solidifies it in the mid game, and he is one map away from moving on. Yeah, that's big for Skillis, taking the 2-1 lead here in the lower bracket. Honestly, all three games so far a little bit funky. Uh, you don't often see, I mean, I don't know how many adapts it was, but I felt like at one point it was already 18 adapts or so heading towards yeah, Elaze's side of the map, and Elaze's army was literally uh, 69 drones, 67 drones, and 10 queens. That's all he had. I mean, that is terrifying. It was 19 adapts. Uh, Elaser was just not ready, scouting wasn't there, misread the game a little bit, expected just maybe some stalkers a bit down the line, did not expect the 19 adepts and just took too much damage. That he did. You say it was big for Skillis. Uh, one thing, folks, for you that's not going to be all that big. We got to go to a break. It's going to be about three minutes. And when we're back, game four.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dream Max Darknet 2 Masters Europe Regionals Valencia where we are in our final best of five of the day. Of course Europe will continue again tomorrow after this one is done but we still have some NA Starcraft to get excited over later tonight but I also hope we still have some really exciting PVZs ahead of us because it's not a 3-0 but these have not exactly been the banger games that we were hoping for when the laser and skillers are going to duke it out with one another with the tournament lives on the line. I'm Roddy joined by Biomov. And let's get it on for game four between these two. The bottom left side, we're looking at the main base of the Russian Protoss living in the Netherlands, playing these games from the Team Liquid headquarters. It is Skillis. His opponents in the upper right looking to ride that horse, seahorse, to a victory in game four. He is a laser. What type of horse is, is the Team Liquid horse, actually? Definitely the right person to ask that, mate, because I just spend my days reading up about horses all the time. I mean, you live, what, two hours away from their their uh, their headquarters? I got to imagine. And, you know, that, that gives you some sort of, like, at least knowledge by proximity. Two hours, huh? Your Dutch geography is excellent. I think I asked you on your stream once. <laughs> no, it's like 45 minutes. Uh, okay, well, never mind. I mean, it depends a little bit on traffic, right? Like, obviously, if I drive during rush hour, it could be two hours. But if I... Uh, if I would drive in the middle of the night, I don't think it would take me more than 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, it's what, What's the joke? It's like, you know, the Americans think two hours is a short drive and Euro Europeans think 200 years is a short amount of time. <laughs> what? 200 years? All right. Like, you know, in America, it's like, oh, 200 years ago was forever ago. Like the almost the foundation of America. Well, and, you know. I do think that 200 years ago is a very long okay. time ago. <laughs> but yeah, no. <laughs> it is kind of funny when people are like, oh, how far is Homestore Cup for you? And then, like, it's often closer for me to drive from my house to Homestore Cup in Germany than it is for a lot of Germans, right? Like, I'm pretty sure that I live a lot closer to Krefeld than Lambo does, for instance, or maybe even than Showtime. Like, even though Showtime lives somewhat nearby, but pretty sure my drive is short. And we're like, wow, the Netherlands is so tiny. But I'm thinking, like, nah. Driving to the border, that's pretty far, you know, that's like a solid two hours. It takes me two hours to get to Germany. That's a long drive, guys. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, like, it's the Texas effect where there are um, yeah, many spots in Texas where you, you go and you're like, okay, the, the nearest, the closest three national parks to me are in, like Dallas, for example. Um, the closest three national parks to me are in Texas. Fourth closest one is in another state. And then like the fifth closest one is also in Texas because it is that big. So, mm -hmm. you know. Texas is very big. I it know. is big. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a summer there and it was, um, yes, it was it was large. You know, I really like San Antonio. It has nothing to do with it, but I feel like people never talk about San Antonio, but I think that city is so cute with the river walk and everything. I love it. Anyways, enough about Texas, San Antonio, and how long it takes me to drive anywhere. Let's focus on game four between Skillers and Elaser. It's a very big deal for them. Tournament life is on the line here in the lower bracket. The winner makes it into the top eight of the most prestigious European event. The loser, unfortunately, has to settle for a top 12 finish, which isn't bad, but we know that both these guys are probably considering them top eight in Europe at this point themselves. So it's a big series. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we look at any sort of ranking, you know, Skillis is top five for us. The laser is right around the same. And both players had these incredible group runs, a laser topping his group, Skillis topping his group until the very end before he gets knocked down to the lower bracket. So not only do these players say, consider themselves top eight. And I think we, you and I both consider these players top eight as well, but their results are have have shown that and any any sort of like top 12 finish at this point it will be a disappointment but unfortunately roddy one of these players will have to go home in the next game or two i only hope that we have those bangers that have been promised to us the starcraft gods have sacrificed to us by giving us those three zeros these last two games are going to be incredible i believe the laser is making a decent amount of zerglings here, right? 18 of them are going to run to the other side of the map. When you make this many links, you are hoping for some success. Bare minimum, you kill the two adapts, you kill the probe, you kill the pylon. Ideally, you get a cancel on that nexus. The oracles are quite far out of position. So here we go. The laser is going to settle for that nexus immediately. And it does seem like he has the right amount of links to get the job done. Like if the oracles were in the right spot, this Nexus could have been safe, but the Oracles were somewhere in the middle of the map, and that's just a little bit too far out of position. So a decent investment by Elaser, who wants to get the double cancel, or at least prevent it from going down. Ah, good start for the Polish Zerg. 
That Nexus, okay, now the Nexus is in the right spot. For a second, I was looking at that. Oh no, it's killed. <laughs> done what he did on, uh, on, what was it, 2000 Atmospheres as well? Curious Minds. <laughs> Curious Minds, there we go. Oh, we're, we're okay. You know, Roddy, one day I wish to have your StarCraft memory. Uh, well, I mean, this, hap this happened 35 minutes ago, I think you. Yeah, but like, I'm literally, I'm literally a goldfish. <laughs> I'm actually really bad with map names. That's the one thing that I don't have good memory in. But it was just kind of funny because I took a look at it. I was like, mm, he does have three bases. Then I saw that they, the Nexus was really in the middle of nowhere. I was like, all right, I can understand that Skillers did not truly plan on using that. But he was very committed. And that he was. It is interesting to see. Uh, skill is not going for that third oracle in this game because normally the the new style that hero has been playing has been you, you get three oracles the first two get aggressive they try to find value and that third one prevents the nexus cancel that we just saw a laser be able to accomplish so two oracles they were on the other side of the map as you said that was a problem but now three adepts here they find their way into the natural looking for some of the damage that the oracles were denied by having to go home and make sure that the nexus doesn't fall but a laser's just getting ready for another big push here. In fact, yeah, it looks like he's going for that queen walk once again this time. Hopefully he does not bank as hard as he did on Berlingrad because 18 more Lings on the way. Lings already trying to get on top of these pylons, maybe depower some static events, but there are four pylons right now. And we also need to point out there are more queens in this push than there were last time. Last time it was six, this time it is eight. There is more healing now, more DPS, more transfuses. Is this going to be enough for Laser to punch through? I mean, Skillers has a lot of gas, but he can't really use that. He's going to make a couple sentries, but I don't think sentries are really your dream unit. I mean, this is do or die. Laser's tournament live is on the line, and he needs to find a lot of success with this push. Once more, we have a bit of money saved up. Here come the Queens. A lot of cannons, though, or a lot of batteries that should help. But there isn't a lot of firepower on the side of Skillers, and having firepower is very important as Battery Overcharge has been activated immediately all the way in the back of the third. So far, it's definitely looking very promising for Skillers because he's just not losing a unit yet. And look at that bank of E-Laser, it is too big. That it is, it's because all the Queens, they injected Nether on the other side of the map. A laser has more Queens on the way now, uh, but he doesn't have them yet. So they're not they're not there, they're not transfused. You cannot walk them across. But the shield battery is now done. The Ravagers are just trying to drop Biles. Ooh. And these Stalkers, yeah, they have Blink, but they are trapped at the back of things, trying to make something happen. Uh, but as they continue to Blink on backwards, they're doing such a good job of just trading, killing Lings, killing Ravagers, backing up once again. And as more Stalkers warp in, the supplies are starting to get a little bit closer. But still, this is not exactly a fight that Skillis feels too comfortable about just yet. But Roddy, the Queens, they're starting to fall on the left side. Yeah, I mean, it's still very close. Oh, that's a slow warping, by the way, of Skillers. His stalk is behind the mineral line. That's very Ugh. painful. That pylon is actually going to help Skillers in a weird way. But it was so smart of Elaze to take out the pylons. It unpowered the batteries. But look at that Oracle with Pulsar Beam putting in a lot of damage. It is still awfully close, but awfully close is not good for Elaze, who's got no attack upgrades. He is not going to break the natural, and he didn't even take out the Nexus. Uh oh, this may very well be the end of Elazer as he did a lot of damage, but that's not enough. Elazer needed a very big victory there with the big commitment that he made. Skellis just did a great job in getting ready for it, building a bunch of batteries. And I think Elazer did an awesome job in empowering some of those static defenses, but he just eventually ran out of steam. That was excellent. Excellent shield battery placement there from Skillis. Sometimes you see in, in holds like this, you put them all in the front to make sure that you have maybe more service area. But by putting him behind that, the Biles were never able to knock the shield batteries down, which did cause problems. And now Skillis on the other side, he's going to deny five Ravagers, at least three of them, and he's going to get a fourth there, even more expensive because it doesn't get canceled. And now as he runs on in with this plus one with his Blink Stalkers, it almost feels that this build in part is designed to deal with a lot of pushes like this. This new hero style that has been played more and more, I rarely see these type of pushes work anymore, but a laser, he's going to try to make a last ditch effort, trying to make something happen. He has a minor supply lead, but Blink Stalkers make up for that one significantly. And Skillis, he, he's got a he's got a pylon down here. It looks like he may look to start maybe even pushing with some shield batteries, but for now, Ling is on the backside trying to make something happen. Oracles have plenty to say about that one here. And okay, no, it's just going to be for gateways. Does he not have a, no, he does not have a warp prism. Gateway goes down, only slow warp in, so it looks like Skillis will not be able to end the game, at least from warp ins from the front, but these roaches do not trade well against Charles Lop Link Stalker. No, don't forget that Skillers has a two upgrade advantage. So even if the fights may not look all that pretty, let's say he doesn't win the game here, he's still going to be fine. But I do feel this was a bit of an over commitment by Skillers. There was really no need for him to try to end that game immediately. 
perhaps he has no idea that Elaser was actually on a very low drone ground. Maybe he felt that after surviving but losing a bunch of probes, he needs to deal damage immediately on the other side of the map. I don't think that's the case at all. He just needs to be safe, safe, make sure that he doesn't donate stalkers, make sure he doesn't get surrounded. But he is so eager to keep on pushing. And of course, he does have plus two. He is supply blocked and is for a split moment as he's waiting for that pilot to finish up. Like, I don't think Skillers needs to be this crazy aggressive. As now once more links show up on the other side of the map. Do we have another overcharge? The answer is pretty much always yes, we have another overcharge. Not even needed though. Skillers will continue pressuring and maybe it is still going to be good enough to get Elaser out of this game. But with the slow warp ins, it is somewhat dicey. That it is. Gateway is going to be coming up eventually, but not right now. And I do like this pressure from Skillers so long as he doesn't lose anything. Right, just forcing the, the, the Zerg to continuously trade, not allowing a laser to drone up and drone up and drone up is always going to be nice so long as the Stalkers stay alive. He's doing a fantastic job of that right now as the Stalkers blink backwards. Ling's trying to take the fight. A uh, little bit of drone damage. I guess they were pulled, but the Oracle's flying now. Uh, this is going to be their death because the Queens are going to knock them down, but even getting damage here is fantastic. Zealots in the fourth base as well, knocking down the small amount of drones that a laser has been able to make. And, and later he has to react to that, which means the stalkers, they wedge their way in on top of this third base right now. Decent concave coming on oh. from Skillis here. He's now blinking in the man ascendant, going to one of the top Protoss players in Europe. And he is a seconds away. He blinks on top and that is it, a laser. He looks great in the groups, but Skillis, he knocks him out. PVZ is fantastic.